Hey there, my name is Wudong Funk, and I'm Wudong Monk. I uh, have with me Chris Gray right here. We were going to go over some basic uh, graph escapes. We we're going to go over principles of graph escapes. I wanted to start out by doing the very basic fundamental level of the loop style Tai Chi ball exercise because that is going to be how we're going to move with these escapes. So what I want you to do first is that you're going to put your weight on one leg. Stand up straight, make sure that your knee is bent, make sure your back is up straight, your eyes are forward, and you're going to take your leg and you're going to draw it in a circle like a record. Do a couple in each direction. We're not going to do that many right now. You can gradually increase the amount that you do go the other way. Try the other leg. the other way. Good. Now, switch legs again. We're going to go like steering wheel. Go the other way. The slower you do it, the better it is for you, but we're going to just start at a medium pace. Just so that we can get to the other leg. Try to keep it as smooth as you can. Breathe naturally with your motion. Don't worry exactly about where the breath is. Go the other way. Good. Now we're going to do circles like a tire. start by teaching the legs exercise with the ball first because that gets, you have to get the feeling in your core in order to do that. So what I want you to do is replicate that feeling in your core. So think of your core, you're done against the middle of your hips. Your core is the sphere of muscle around it. That's how I want you to think of it. Right? So that same feeling you got with your legs, now we're going to move with our hands. Keep your back up straight, shoulders down, don't look down, look forward. We're going to do half turns like a record. All the way one way. Then the other way. Keep it rolling. Then the other way. If you don't get the core feeling at first, you practice that a little bit every day, you'll gradually get better over time. Just by practicing it just a little bit. Now, what this teaches us is how to move and flow like water, right? So if a greater force, or if two forces meet, then the greater force wins, right? But if instead of meeting force with force, if you flow around it like water, so what this is teaching you to do is to move like water, right? So when water meets a stone, water doesn't flow straight at the stone. Water flows around the stone, right? 
and that is how a greater, uh, lesser force can overcome a greater force. And we're going to use that to go over how to non-violently escape if you're being grabbed. This can work for any sort of grab, like let's say somebody is grabbing you and dragging you somewhere, or whatever. It could even be if more than one person is grabbing you. If you stick to the principle of moving like water, or moving in a circle, moving like a ball, like water does, then you, you can easily escape just by following that principle, instead of necessarily worrying about, oh, do I go left or right, oh, do I go up or down, what specifically do I do, what I'm showing you now is how to go about it, okay? And if you meet resistance, go another way. So, let's say, and this could work with any sort of grab, it doesn't matter how he grabs me, but I like to start with a wrist grab, because that's really simple. Doesn't matter, right? So I just draw a circle, right? Let's say he grabs me and I go to draw the circle and he can feel me going that way so he's going to stop it, right? So he's going to like use his force to stop me from moving. Well, then I just circle a different way and it doesn't matter which way. I just feel the path of least resistance, right? Say he grabs me with both hands, it doesn't matter. I just move in a circle, right? Say he grabs both of my hands, it doesn't matter. I move in a circle, right? So when you practice with your partner, I'm giving you all sorts of ideas, but what you want to do is you want to actually start by practicing so slow. So like, let's say he grabs me, right? So now he's giving me a decent grip, but he's not doing it so hard that my hands pop off, but he's given me enough of a grip that I have to actually try, right? So I would actually want to, especially if you've never done martial arts before, I want to start by practicing slow. And I might do that a couple of times slow. Right? And then maybe I speed it up a little bit. And then I would practice it more at like a real speed. Right? So take your time, break it down into its simplest parts. And also notice I'm putting into my muscle memory walking away because the idea here, here is that we're escaping, right? So he grabs me however which way. I draw a circle, and then I also want to practice the muscle memory of I go ahead and start moving. Okay? So, he could possibly, maybe he grabs my head. Right? Draw a circle. Maybe he does the like full Nelson thing or whatever. Right? Draw a circle. It doesn't matter. Right? And right now we're examining the yin applications of it or the yielding, the feminine side of it. <clears throat> the yang side is apparent on the other side of the circle, but right now we're going over how to escape in a nonviolent way, okay? So let's say, let's say he gets my arm up like this. That's a, that's a lock that happens sometimes, right? So what do I do? I draw a circle. Let's say he gets me like that, and let's say I start to draw a circle, but I can't quite go that way. What do I do? I draw a circle in a different way. It doesn't quite matter exactly. If you meet resistance, then you go another way. Let's say that he goes to grab my leg, like maybe a wrestler would or something like that. What do I do? I draw a circle. I just did it with my leg. Okay? Think of whatever way. Grab me in whatever way. Right? Draw a circle. Draw a circle. Maybe he grabs me a different way. I draw a circle. Right? Maybe he's got my neck or something. Right? Draw a circle. Right? Whatever grabs you can think of, man. Draw a circle. Let's do chicken wings. Draw a circle. Let's do Draw a circle. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Draw a circle. Maybe do that one again. Draw a circle. Mm -hmm. All sorts of stuff. Right? Let's do one more, mm -hmm. and then I'll turn it over to you. Draw a circle. All sorts of stuff that you can do to be able to escape without actually hitting a person. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Master Prince, and he's going to teach whatever he wants. All right. Keeping with this same concept. So some of the stuff that I'll touch is a couple of specific things. He's already kind of gone over, especially with getting used to moving from your core to power your movements. Okay, so just to give an example, if he stands in like a basic to a stable horse stance or whatever, when you're just using arm energy or like the weight of your arm and muscle, and I'm not gonna like structure my body, I'm just gonna use the arm. It's kind of hard for me to do it wrong for what this would happen. But see, if he resists this, see there's a certain level of resistance with pushing with my arm. But if I connect to his arm, I mean with my arm to his body, and obviously I weigh more than him when not just my arm moving, but when I move my whole body, look how much control I have. So, when you're doing some of these things, like let's say a person grabs, when you make your circle, just like he explained how to make the circle from your bouncing in from your core, don't think about just where you're getting attacked. If it's just arm energy, he can almost kind of deal with that. Jake is pretty flexible. But see, when I make my circle by turning my body, now, my whole, you know, couple hundred or more pounds for me is in motion powering that movement instead of just a few pounds of my arm. See, I'm struggling with arm and muscle energy, just the arm. But when I move my whole body, see how much more powerful that is. Okay, so just think about that. And some of that is just moving your feet. But don't think about it too hard. Don't think about the side stances or this foot here and all that. Just move and stay in balance. Keep your head right over your tailbone as much as you can. Now, another little thing with escaping from grabs. Let's say, uh, let me have it on for a second. When you do joint locking techniques, there's three dimensions that you normally work with. Okay? You can actually stretch the muscle, you know, separate the muscle. You can twist it, okay, and actually get the tendon which is a little bit more painful, a little bit more, more effective. When you lock something and you actually stretch it out, twist it, and then bend it. You see the reaction? It gets into the ligaments, which is a lot of pain. Now, we're going over escapes right now. So if I were grabbing him and attacking, you know, I would do some of those techniques to really lock him up. But if someone grabs, you can think of the same way. Now, if we just stay stationary, I can pull, I can turn and pull, okay, or I can kind of spiral turn and pull. But notice when I do the spiraling and pulling, I work in three dimensions. Pulling, I'm spiraling, okay, and the third dimension is I move my whole body. I started here, I ended here. So when your whole body is in motion, all of your body weight powers your techniques, not just the arm motion, the muscle of the arm and all that. So keep that in mind. Now, adding right on top of this, and this is all later. You can work in different pieces, small pieces, and put it together. The last thing is this. When somebody grabs, they're either trying to hold you still or pull you. You know, there's an instinct to pull back. You actually kind of give them what they want. It's kind of like what Jacob talked about before. If two forces meet, the greater force is going to win. So we need an advantage to take the person bigger than you. So when you grab, a lot of times, you do the same thing, but you go with them. They grab you, they want to pull you in, fine. Go ahead and go ahead and let them have that space. I can go this way. So he's thinking, he's counting on the resistance so he can reach. When I take that resistance away and do my circle and move towards him, so I don't want to move away from the energy. He pulls, let him do all the work, and I'll just follow through with that, and everything is still cool. And that's pretty much it. Just a couple more concepts I wanted to throw out. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Practice, practice, practice.